Mike Kirkham is one. Martin Steinhardt is the other one. Wow, yeah, that 56 is always so fast at Crandon. Look, and he goes really, really wide. You talked about that in opening ceremonies, that if you get out in that loose stuff, it really dogs your car out. There's Joe now in our camera. Yeah, Joe running in fourth right now, trying to run down Mark Airsteiny Steinhardt as they go through the chicane into the Argonne corner. See J.D. Coran in that number 84. A couple of years ago, J.D. had a pretty bad crash in ERX. Took him a, quite a while to come back from that injury. And tell he's finally back at full strength. He's been getting a lot of help from Matt Gerald just on, on driving and car setup. You can see all that hard work finally paying off for the number 84. Yeah, he knew, he knew to put himself with guys that have been around the sport for a long time. Matt Gerald's helping him out. Wow, there's a contact right there. Yeah, Job got really crossed up, and it looks like Jordan Burnlord just couldn't get on the brakes quick enough to avoid running into the back of him. Fortunately, he didn't send Job spinning around there at the top of turn two. Well, Kirkham now, look at he's going really, really wide. He knew that in the gravel pit, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, and it looks like it's going to work this time. Yeah, he's going to find out how heavy the dirt is. Looks like they moved enough dirt around that he was able to get some great forward drive. So he moves up a spot past Jordan Burnlor. And now Kirkham stares at the back bumper of Larry Joe. Yeah, Kirkham, he really likes that cushion. If he goes over it, he's not going to be happy. He's got to stay right in that fine line. As Job now protecting that inside. As the track still just really, really wet on that inside line. You can see by the K-rail. See that boulder rolling around. <laughs> oh yeah, you'll you'll uncover a few rocks here at Cranton International Raceway. You see it looks like Coran has now dropped a spot to Mark Steinhardt. So now nothing but a whole bunch of Crandon real estate between Steiny and our race leader Michael Meister. Yeah, and you know Steinhardt, he knows how to be patient. He he didn't want to get in that first corner accident, but he panned out pretty well. He knows he's got that halfway point. We're about six minutes to go in this one. And I'm sure he has something up his sleeve, but he knows. He, he'll give you, he'll be the first one to give Michael Meister credit that he's a good driver. Yeah, for sure. You know, talking about Steiny keeping something up his sleeve, like I talked about earlier, veteran drivers tend to be more second half guys, especially since the addition of the competition caution, which is about to come out here. You know Stein, he's got something in the tank for uh, Meister here in the second half. Yeah, he really does. He, he's waiting on it, and now he's going to get a clean view. ChristianCarsOnline.com, pace truck. He's going to pick up our field, and man, Michael Meister bouncing back after hurting that engine. But he, he said, hey, I've had so many good years, he right. said, leading up to this. I can't even be mad, Brent. He's like, why can I be mad? This stuff happens. It's off-roads. And I, I thought that was so cool because you can let your whole self down the whole weekend off a blown motor. And he's like, heck, I'll just go home and get another one. You know, and that's what you got to do. And that's why he's a champion and that's why he's a winner. Right. That's what makes you a five-time champion. But <laughs> again, the driver who's going to be on his back bumper on this restart, <laughs> way more than five championships. Probably take you more than your two hands to count the total. That's Mark Steinhardt. Coran, another great run as well. He's third at halfway, but right now we're going to go down trackside to Haley Shanley. She's got an update for us. Well, I got a big grin on my face when you guys are talking about more. The veteran racers start to look for more passing opportunities and even waiting until the second half to do so. But another factor that's going to aid into that are these track conditions, as we expected it to do with the breeze and sunshine that we're having. We're seeing more lines be created, seeing more racers create those opportunities, namely just to my left here uh, in this Yokohama Amsoil corner. We're seeing racers, they're not hugging the bottom anymore. They're starting to work their way up. And I actually saw that at least three, four laps ago. So we're starting to see this track really come in in quick time yeah and Haley's absolutely right there the uh, especially the veterans who've done hundreds or thousands of laps around this track here at Crandon they know how those lines are going to develop too and they might be able to find them just a tick quicker than some of the uh, rookies or the more green drivers in the class yeah the more track time that you get the better off you are and we're ready to go back green flag racing. Look at Steinhardt, we talk about getting that little bit of a run. He's waiting on Michael Meiser. Watch on this backside, they'll take off, and there they go. That looks like a couple drivers jumped on the line. Larry Job was one of them, but he checked up right away. That might actually hurt him in the long run. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. It probably hurt him more than it helped him going in that loamy dirt. See Billy Booth trying to pick his way through the field as well after being tangled up with Steinhardt in that turn one incident. Up front, Mike Meister, again, just 
off like a rocket on that restart. Yeah, two different lines there going through the gravel pit. Steinhardt looks to stay about the same gap behind Michael Meister, but this track is still really, really wet. I mean, for how dry it is outside, it's, it's really moisturized, and it's really hard to get it to come in early in the race. They have to wait till this second half to even get bite. Yeah, I saw Meister that last time through Calamity Corner just tiptoeing as we got trouble. I believe that's Kirkham and Brister tangled up. Boy, Brister, two accidents in one race. Man, oh man. Yeah, yeah what a right. tough break for Kirkham, too. He was up there mixing it up in the top five. Now he's all the way at the tail end of this field. There we go again, talking about a driver. Announcer's <laughs> curse strikes again. Wow, look at that gap now. He's opened it up about an eight, nine car length gap. Man, Meister is just such a technician. It's just so enjoyable to watch him drive. Just the way that he hits every single mark, lap after lap after lap. It's just unbelievable that you can be not only that fast, just raw speed, but consistent on top. Yeah, and, and you could look at Steinhardt and be like, yeah, he's just sitting there waiting for a mistake. But Steinhardt will obviously tell you, he'll be like, yeah, well, the chance of him making a mistake is pretty, pretty low, so. Right, you wait for a mistake out of any of these fast guys. Yeah. You're, uh, that's a fool's errand, you're not gonna get one. You might be waiting a long, long time. And yeah, no, no free ones in this class, for sure. Three minutes to go in this pro buggy race in round three. A lot of these drivers trying to bounce back after a starting of the season. We're in round one and two, maybe you didn't get off to the great start, and you're trying to rebound yourself back. Just look at that dry line he finds up on the top side and then he hugs his inside. Steiny almost hit that tractor tire one time. Yeah, he's been trying to stay way to the inside like we talked about it. You can stand there and look at the cowboy cutoff and it looks wider than it is because the actual race line kind of cuts across it at an angle. And then obviously at the top, it, it just gets narrow and there's just no room. Redesigned barn jump, you can see the air time. That Billy Booth was skying off that jump. Boy, he's just being consistent today. You know, Billy Booth, once in a while, you see him, he's right up front today, just not the start he wanted to have. Right, well, he's had that uphill battle since he was right. tangled up in turn one. It's not like anybody in this class is slow, really, so. No. You know, even trying to pass a guy for eighth place, you got your work cut out for you. Oh, and you see a couple drivers getting a little bit crossed up there, Karan and Joe both. Yeah, I was worried Karam was going to over-rotate right there. He was double-guessing himself on entry. Job's going to try to put the pressure on with two minutes to go in this race. Still all Michael Meister out front. Steinhardt now pretty much by himself in second. Larry Job though, keeping J.D. Karam honest. You see Job trying to stay on that dry line just as long as he possibly could. Yeah, and it hurts you on exit there, but he's gonna try to put it together. He's running out of time, but you have to put the lap together. Look at that run he gets out of that bottom. Yeah, Job has that entry to oh. the Cowboy cutoff figured out. Little mistake by Coran. And now Booth running up to the back of these guys. Coran still holding on to that position. Job wants to put the pressure on. Oh, Job almost hits a K-rail. Made a big mistake. Wow, that might let Billy Booth get a bit of a run as they go down toward the gravel pit. Definitely gives Coran a little bit of breathing room. You see still two different lines. Coran's just running that outside. Oh, they made contact. Job's like, hey, I'm right there. I've been working on this pass. Jordan Burnlore mixing it up with Billy Booth right behind Coran and Job. And Job just keeps looking to the inside. He's just waiting for that one chance to maybe shoot the gap there on Coran as we got about 30 seconds to go on the race clock. So this will be two laps to go for the pro buggies. Boy, Job is really working hard to try to get around Coran. He's been right in Coran's back pocket now for about three laps, so. He likes that bottom side there. Yeah, he tries it again. This is where Job's been getting yep. a really good run. They tangle, tangle again. Oof. And Job is gonna pay the price. There goes Burnlore on by Job. And he knew he had that run going in there, and he didn't have time to check up, and he just hit the back tail of yeah. Coran. Booth was able to get by as well, so Job lost two spots there. Just like that. And that shows you exactly what we are talking about, how narrow that cutoff lane really is. It, it squeezes you together. And those two just ran out of room. There was no intent there by JD. He was just trying to hold his line. And 
Job had a full head of steam, and that's sometimes how it happens. Yeah, and if you're Job, you just, you had your right line, what you wanted, you just had no real estate left, and look at this. Billy Booth moving Karan out of the way, taking yeah, well, over that spot. White flag should be coming out this time by, and it does. I think Karan moved himself out of the way. He just came in there a little too hot and heavy into the gravel pit and got over the cushion like we've seen. You just go a little past that cushion, you run out of traction in a real hurry. So you see Meister passing the 80-year-old Tom Schwartzberg, racing in his 54th season here at Crandon. So cool to see, showing up week in and week out. Michael Meister doing the same. He's going to look at another victory in his career and, man, to overcome what he had to in the beginning parts of this weekend. That 94 red plate, it's on there for a reason. Well, with five championships, you can hang a whole bunch of red plates back in the <laughs> shop at home. Like we said, after that tough break, he wasn't even able to take the green flag in round one, so he's got an uphill climb to get back into the championship conversation this year. But this will be two wins in a row if he can bring it home, and that's about as well as you can do. Yeah, he's, he's getting the job done once again here at his hometown track from Rhinelander, Wisconsin. It's going to be Michael Meister in the Ponzi back 94. Going to win this afternoon in round three. Wow, what an interval he had at the line there. Just checked out on everybody else. Mark Airsteiny Steinhardt picks up another podium finish in his long storied history racing here at Cran International Raceway. And Billy Booth across the line in third, so he salvaged a nice finish out of that uh, poor start that he got as well. So nice afternoon of work there by Billy Booth. Certainly he'll look to reload and run up front with Meister tomorrow. Yeah, they're going to get everything all cleaned up, ready to rock and roll, and we might see a new winner, but it's going to be hard to take down that man right there, Michael Meister. Steinhardt second, Booth third, Coran fourth, Job rounding out your top five. We'll be back right after this. You're watching Amsoil Championship Off-Road, presented by the U.S. Air Force. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We changed the industry by formulating the first API qualified 100% synthetic motor oil. The rest of the market has been trying to follow our lead ever since, but a head start is a head start. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. It's your Uncle Cooper. If you and your truck are constantly tackling the regular duties of the day, go with a tire that can handle them all. Oh man. I stepped in it. Go with the Coopers.
Welcome back to the Forest County Potawatomi Brush Run here at Cranon International Raceway. Good look at Michael Meister, your round three winner from Pro Buggy, climbing out of that car. Certainly looking for a cold drink of water, no doubt about that, with the sun shining down on us here at Crandon. But let's meet the top three from round three here in Pro Buggy, finishing third today from Stacy, Minnesota, Billy Booth. In second from Rhinelander, Wisconsin, Mark Airsteiny Steinhardt. And your winner from Cronenwetter, Wisconsin, Michael Meister. Well, another hard fought one there in the pro buggy. These guys always put on one heck of a show. We'll send it down now to Haley Shanley with our top three. Hard fought and highly strategic, I'd, I'd have to imagine just how this track changes, but everything that this class demands. Billy Booth, I was watching you, <laughs> just stalking that. down this podium position. Uh, you didn't come out of nowhere, so walk me through the opportunities that you saw to pass your way into this podium spot. Yeah, the, the new section in back is where I, where I mouth my ground. There was a nice dry line at the bottom of Argonne, I hit that with my left rear at the turning break, and then I get a drive and get next to the guys and then you have the position there and, and take it away. So, man, that was, a, that was a big time drive. We were backwards in turn one, trying to avoid Mark and Matt, and, just kind of put my head down and said, hey, we got we to get recovered. I didn't think a podium was possible, but yeah, then just had the mud much around there. I took a face full in the Argon that it, it plugged every, like it was two inches thick, had to scoop it off my head to keep going, but man, I never had to do that before now, but uh, good recovery nonetheless, which is, which is what we needed to have today. So it's a big thing. So much more tear tear-offs worked amazing today. Thank God I had one. I'll turn machine tool. Uh, my parents, a bunch of guys came out, Jeremy, Ian, Adam, Zach. Sai, everybody helps out. Schultz is back in the hot pits. It takes a team to do this, but uh, big thanks to Grandin. You know, it was, it was a trap we had. I, I knew what we were going to get, so I was debating tire choice and super stock, and I think I made the right choice in the end. A job well done. Bring in the fight. Billy Booth, P3. And Mark Air Steinhardt, signature consistency out there, but putting together good laps. So uh, how are you feeling about your performance today? Well, I had a good start, and I seen Michael, you know, he was starting way up in front of us and had a good start, and I was alongside him going into turn one, and, and then it was slippery. And I went around, we had help, whatever, I don't know what happened, but I was facing backwards in turn one. That's not a good feeling when you know a bunch of cars are coming at you, but was able to spin it back around, and I don't know, I think by I got to the gravel pit, I was back to fourth. So did some good driving on the wet, slippery stuff, and I got up there as soon as I could, and chased Michael down and then my fresh air fan came off and for an old guy that's a little bit out of shape with no air fan on I was getting a little winded there towards the end so I was just going to try to bring it home to the end not that that it's an excuse Michael's a fast driver so but I got to thank everybody that helps me out um, without a doubt I couldn't be here Argon Lumber uh, TKO, TKO Racing Team for doing us in the pits uh, Chris Nambos Guaranteed Rate uh, Ala Mode Lonnie Mode and Bobby Mode Wash Smart Laundry Lobby Todd's Automotive I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Thanks for all the help in the pits. Glenn, Jacob, Margine, everybody that helps me out. And uh, we got one more position for tomorrow. We'll see if we can do it. Well, job well done. Way to rally back. This is Mark Steinhardt. <laughs> and your race winner, back-to-back -back, Michael Meister. Uh, again, another just craziness earlier on in this race, but you seem to come out on top of it in a very impressive interval, by the way. So how'd you do it? Oh man, uh, you know, it's very difficult to get a whole shot here, especially with Mark next to me. You know, he's always on top of it. And I think I just, you know, the invert uh, switched us up a little bit and I was a uh, slower qualifier for yesterday. So I got more towards the blue wall on the inside and, you know, you're a little further ahead. And then, uh, you know, I think we just had a little better in the, the rhythm section going into the first corner, but uh, it's just, you know, we, we know what we're getting into here. It's always, it's always slick here and it was, it was coming around. Um, but, you know, it's been a wild, honestly, the whole season's been, but I popped a motor in qualifying. Uh, we've been struggling all day to keep it going. I had low oil pressure, you know, just all kinds of stuff. But, you know, there's been so many guys, you know, Mark, Glenn, uh, you know, Brandon, uh, Matt Pyburn, 
uh, Brad, Austin, you know, my dad, Caitlin, you know, there's so many people that helped me the last couple of days and uh, I hate to get all uh, choked up, but, you know, I really appreciate everybody. And, uh, you know, this makes it a little more worth it. And, uh, but I really got to thank everybody, uh, Ponce North America, Michael Meister Logging, Bubbler, Mid Wisconsin Beverage, you know, everybody's uh, Apex Auto Systems, JP Remington with VP Fuel, Fastlane Woodworks, uh, you know, there's so many more. Uh, Beyond Redline, Bob, I wouldn't have been racing without Bob, my engine builder today. So thank you very much, Bob. I was about ready to call it quits and we were going to go have cocktails on the hill, you know. And he kind of worked a way around for uh, my cooling system and my filtering. So thank you very much, Bob. And, uh, you know, I look forward to tomorrow now. Well, I'm glad you guys worked your magic. And man, this guy puts a lot of heart into it. Enjoy this one. Michael Meister, your race winner for Pro Buggy. Thank you very much, Haley. Coming up next, Pro Stock Side-by-Side. -side. You're not going to want to miss it. You're watching Amsoil Championship Off-Road, presented by the U.S. Air Force. Uh, I'm Chris Van Elsen, and uh, I'm really excited to be representing Allies of Autism and uh, partnering with Allies of Autism for um, the Crandon races this year. We're really excited to be hooked up with Chris Van and Elzen with uh, VDE Racing and Allies of Autism to help promote autism awareness. Background for me, I love racing, had a passion to race, and uh, you know, my, my sons, Kyle and Cade, we had a um, obviously a great relationship, but then as far as, uh, yeah, you shake Haley's hand and then stand here, buddy. And this is autism at its best, right? But um, passion to race, so I thought, what better way to combine racing and also uh, autism awareness. So I formed a, a nonprofit organization called Allies of Autism, and uh, we dug into it. And you know, my family, my friends, uh, they just, they all dug in deep to help uh, the cause. And the monies that we won for prize money, we gave back 50% um, of our prize money over the years. So we were able to give over 30 grand back to families dealing with autism at the end of each year. And every year we always check in with each other, talk to each other, and uh, once you know Kevin got out, he we started talking about what we wanted to do to keep allies alive. It's it's something that we're very passionate about. These are people that we love, that we uh, we care about, and and are a very integral part of society that we need to definitely pay a lot more attention to and and. and um, be allies for and talk to a lot more. So it's awesome to have Kyle here. Uh, his twin, Cade, he's got more of a deficit, so it's really tough for him. He's only come to a few, a handful of races, but uh, Kyle gets to a race or two a year. And, uh, and I got the support of my teammates and family. So this work is important because autism affects a, a huge amount. It's one in 39 uh, births. So it's significant. And we're trying to promote that awareness. And uh, Chris latched on uh, last year, December. He knew I retired. So he said, hey, can I hook up with you? And I'd like to give back. You know, how can we promote it? And, and you, you see it on the vehicles here. Um, with the A2 sticker and they're going to physically give back their prize money and some of their sponsor money as well. So kudos to them for stepping up. Welcome back to the Big House Crane International Off-Road Raceway Pro Stock. Coming up next, I'm Brent Smith alongside Shane Stetsny. And man, we are going side-by-side -side racing, but a lot of great drivers. Yeah, this is a field that put on one heck of a show a couple weeks ago at Anigo. We got some interesting newcomers to the Pro Stock field. So let's go down the lineup. Joe Dressel starts P1. He'll be alongside Jack Letourneau. Then it's Johnny Hentges, Andrew Carlson, who's also here racing Pro Turbo and in Pro 4 this weekend at Crandon. Then Jeb Boodle, Dylan Marquardt gets to start right alongside his brother Tyson Marquardt. Tyson is a rookie in Pro Stock this year. Then Trey Eggleston. Of course, C.J. Greaves, he had a win at Antigo in Pro Stock side-by-side. -side. Owen Van Epperen, he has been on top of the box in this class before. Colin Kearns, last year's Pro-Am side-by-side -side champ, starts 11th. Then it's Scott Waz, Josh Bayer, Andrew Fasoni, Dave Mason Jr., a factory-backed Honda out there in the field. He starts 15th. Then it's Jake Kosmecki, Jake Jorgensen, Kyle Anala, Matt Bone, Mike Letourneau, and Kyle Keister starting 21st. 
It's going to get wild in turn one and all the way up to turn two, I think, Brent. Yeah, it's going to get really, really wild. You see they're checking off every car one final time, and it's going to get narrow in Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. See C.J. Greaves out to the right-hand side. And I know this is early, Brent, and I've said this a couple times, but I think about points championships all the time. Coming out of Antigo, C.J. Greaves, 87 points. Trey Eggleston, Tyson Marquardt, Andrew Carlson, Colin Kearns, 84 points apiece. Wow, that's such how a tight even points race. Yeah, that's exactly how evenly matched this field is. Of course, like I said, C.J. Greaves, he was the round one winner back in Antigo. Owen Van Epperen was the winner in round two, and he was not one of those drivers I mentioned in the top five in points. So he's got his work cut out for him, but a lot of heavy hitters here in pro stock side by side. Here we go, green flag flies, we're underway. We'll see how tight it gets in turn number one. Pay attention. A couple cars making contact. One of the Marquards. Yeah, that was Tyson Marquardt. Got knocked around a little bit, but able to gather it back up. Looks like everybody able to make it through cleanly. And Joe Dressel has the race lead. One of the Polaris is in the field showing the way around, but he's got company on the outside. Yeah, you see the glimpse of Scott Waz going through in the 41. Look at this, going wide into the gravel pit. That's the other 41 running alongside Dressel, Jeb Boodle. And he is gonna make that pass happen if he can get that drive out of the gravel pit, and he does. So Jeb Boodle out of Yamasi, South Carolina, now leads here in Pro Stock side-by-side. -side. Boy, did Boodle apex that gravel pit. He got a good run and barely cleared him, but made it work. Look at that bottom side, just hanging it out. You can see the track slippery. Michael Meister said, hey, we knew what they were gonna do with the track, so you just gotta adapt to it. Yeah, everybody just has to be ready. We've seen it all day, even going back to the start of sportsman racing. A lot of water going in, just trying to stay out in front of the heat and the breeze that we have here. So meanwhile, I see another familiar looking car up in the top three. You're shaking your head yes, because you know what I'm talking about. CJ Greaves now joining the party. He'll work on the back bumper of Dressel as they head for Cowboy Cutoff for the first time. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. He works his way. He'll find the fastest line through this racetrack. There he goes, clicking off another one wow. already. He made that pass going up the hill on Cowboy Cutoff. So we wondered if drivers were going to get aggressive enough. Well, CJ Greaves, he'll be aggressive enough to make that pass happen. Yeah, he's so smart. He knows where to put the car. And I mean, it took him a little time to get the bugs worked out of these Polarises. He normally was running Yamaha, now made a deal with Polaris. So it's cool to see him build up that program and prove that he can be a winner in just about anything he gets into. Right, that jump from last year being year one on the Polaris team to this year, year two, night and day difference. He is wicked fast in this car and in the Pro Turbo side-by-side -side that we'll see a little bit later. Now this battle for the front, the lead gonna heat up here. Look at CJ, he's trying to find that dry line right against the K-Rail. Hoping that water truck didn't get right next to that block. And you can see the smoothness out of Greaves as he's about to make this pass. If he can make it stick on the outside, kind of hung out to dry on the slick stuff. They're still side by side. Yeah, he's trying to work CJ Greaves, but CJ sneaks right in front of him. We'll see if he can come back underneath. He goes really, really wide. See if he can get that run. Watch this, Shane. Well, Boodle's going to try to dive back to the bottom as they head for Cowboy Cutoff. He's still there and got, gets a great run. Wow, he was hanging a wheel, that left front wheel, off the inside cliff right there. Yeah, that was a scary move, and he took the lead back over from C.J. Graves. Wow, that's an eye-opener there for Greaves. Now he has to settle back in line in second place. What a pass by Boodle. So they passed one another in Cowboy Cutoff. Yeah, Just Boodle. one lap apart, unbelievable. Yeah, it is unbelievable, but that's how good Boodle's doing right here as he goes into the gravel pit. He don't want to get too, too wide here. He's going to want to leave that bottom closed, but CJ, he wants it different. He's going to go to the bottom and try to do the slide job and sneak in front of him. Well, Watch, he's going to take away that line on exit. Yeah, Boodle was going to try to duck back down to the bottom and cut underneath Greaves, but... Hey, Greaves has driven into the gravel pit a couple times before, and he knows exactly what the other drivers is thinking as they enter that corner. So now C.J. Greaves back in control, but we saw Boodle get by him once. Can he do it again? Yeah, you know you have that halfway point. It's early in this race, and it's scary for everyone else when C.J. Greaves gets out front. He's already opened up about a 10, 12 car length gap going through Argonne. Meanwhile, Joe Dressel, the number 36, still running pretty much by himself in third. The 97 of Jack Letourneau still in fourth. And the 22 of Dylan Marquardt up in the top five as well. Now Greaves trying that way inside line, too. They're just hanging that left front wheel right on the edge of that cliff. 
Yeah, they can they can see that dry clay on that inside. So anytime you can find that dry clay with your tires, gives it a chance to get rid of some of that mud that's on inside those grooves. As CJ Greaves, the Vision Wheel Monster Energy back 33, doing what he needs to do early on. Yeah, letting that car get away. That, it'll get laid out early for some of these uh, drivers here in pro stock. Loved what I saw from Boodle. What I was going to comment on a couple laps ago, though, they were coming through Calamity Corner pretty much bumper to bumper, Greaves and Boodle, and just the smoothness that Greaves has. Boodle was kind of fighting the wheel back and forth, trying to set the car just right, and CJ Greaves was one flick of the wheel, the car was set, and then he was on his way. Yeah, just being comfortable. They, they've worked out all the bugs in that car. They know what it likes. See the battle going on right in front of us. That's a 97. Yeah, Jack Letourneau. Yeah, Letourneau. So we've come to the halfway point already, so this race just flying by. CJ Greaves will pick up the bonus points for leading at halfway. Jeb Boodle in second here at the break. That's Joe Dressel, Jack Letourneau, and Trey Eggleston rounding out the top five. Dylan Marquardt up there in the sixth spot. You got Bayer, Owen Van Epperen, Jorgensen, Kozmecki, and Tyson Marquardt up there as well. And that's a lot of accomplished drivers up there in the top ten. You know when Owen Van Epperen's outside the top five, that's a pretty good field of drivers in this one. Yeah, and that's what we've seen throughout this season so far. Like, we've seen new faces in the top three. We've seen a lot of great competition and Owen Van Epperen it's early yet he still has half the race and he's a smart individual he's a young race car driver but you got to remember he knows how to drive these cars and wait for it to come in yeah you're absolutely right about that Brent but right now let's go down track side Haley Shanley what's going on in pro stock here so to piggyback off what you were saying of Owen Van Epperen, I've been keeping an eye on him. Why? Because he was yesterday's fast qualifier for Pro Stock side by side. We've seen him lingering in around the eighth place position and his lap times have not necessarily been shaving away each and every lap. But this last one, he did shave about over a second and a half off of his lap time. So we'll see if he's just getting things figured out or if he's just playing conservatively, knowing we have that restart after the competition caution. So Owen Van Epperen coming off of a race win in Pro Stock side by side and again, fast qualifier. So we'll see what Owen does. Thank you very much, Haley. And that's what I was saying. I mean, you never know what's inside their game plan. And uh, if you're Owen Van Epperen, he's won a lot in this class already. So he knows what it takes. And we don't know if they set it up for the second half, but we're going to get to see right in front of us who can bring their car to the finish line first. Owen Van Epperen had to be sick after he qualified first, though, and drew that 10 invert oh. because that is a lot of work to do against this field of drivers. Our pace vehicle is pulled off. CJ Greaves takes control of the field. Let's see how he wants to play it on this restart. Well, he takes he off right away. Up. Yeah, he took off right on that downside. Right away, just accelerating away from Boodle and the rest of the gang. It's like Jorgensen in that number 11 trying to make some moves up the inside of turn number two. See if Budo can run that outside lane going into the gravel pit. See, follows CJ Greaves right through the door. Looks like we have a car going off before the gravel pit. Meanwhile, it looks like Eggleston was trying to work his way around Dressel, and Dressel just kind of held his line and moved Eggleston a little bit off the race line, is able to hold on to that spot. But that battle for third and fourth is going to get spicy here. Look at Eggleston gives a, a little bump there, a little tag to the back bumper of Dressel. Yeah, he's definitely quick enough to try to make that pass. It's one thing to get to him, but you gotta set that pass up well before and try to make it happen. As you see the train of cars coming through Argon turn, they're all within one, two car lengths of one another. Eggleston now dives to the bottom of Dressel once again. He'll have the inside, the preferred line as they go up the hill on Cowboy Cutoff. So Eggleston now moves up the spot. Such a cool shot right there with our camera coming out of that new section in Forest County, Potawatomi, turn number one. These cars are starting to work this clay in. There's Marquardt in that 22. Yeah, Marquardt trying to get a spot here on Dressel. So Dressel's had his hands full since this restart. Already lost one spot to the 58 of Eggleston. Kyle Keister, the 29 from Rhinelander. He's facing the wrong direction. Yeah, right on the barn jump. That looks like he's able to get that car fired back up. Going back up front, CJ Green still holding that interval over Jeff Poodle. And CJ's given up so much in Calamity Court. You see, he's stuck to that bottom line the whole time. So his car likes it. 
that's where the best grip is. I remember him talking about that in Antigo too. He said there was there was points in various races at Antigo where your instincts tell you to run one line, but you know that it's going to be, you feel slower, but it's faster to actually be on the dry surface. Right, slow is faster sometimes. You talk to Johnny Greaves about his son, he'll be like, yeah, I can drive the wheels off my truck and CJ can just lay back and relax and he can still beat me. So he knows how to let the truck come to him. That's the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. And you see Van Hepperen, he was eighth on the restart all the way up into the top six now. So he's definitely on the move as well. Yeah, he's definitely on the hunt. Marquardt right in front of him. Watch as Owen Van Eperen is definitely getting faster, as Haley said. Wow, Dylan Marquardt just pushing Joe Dressel down the straightaway towards the gravel pit. Whoa, and Van Eperen goes way outside. He backed it in there, Shane. He, he had no trying. room. A little bit too aggressive there from Van Eperen. He's going to have to fall back in line. I like what he was trying there, but I don't know that these cars quite work the same as a Pro 4. We've seen guys like Scott Douglas use that move in the Pro 4. Yeah, Owen's trying everything. He makes a little bit of a mistake, over-rotates right there, but that battle ahead of him is going to help him out here late in this race. Russell just still fighting for dear life, trying to hold on for fourth over Dylan Marquardt. Marquardt's got an opportunity here on the inside. Ah, uh, shut the door, and nothing there. Dressel just able to hold that speed, and there's Van Epperen just lurking. Staying with these two. Wow, a lot of those guys love that little line there by that tractor tire. It's a, it's a chance you take not to knock that front right off that car. Yeah, you got to know exactly how wide your car is right down to the eighth right. of an inch, I think, to be running it that close like some of these guys. Yeah, and you can't see your tires on these things through the cab as we come to that. No, meanwhile, uh, the 22 at Dylan Marquardt was able to get by Dressel finally, so paid it off with a pass down there in turn two. Yeah, here comes Owen Van Eppern now. Look at that, they're all riding that dry line, and then it pushes them out in that loamy dirt. Yeah, and that cushion that we talked about earlier getting built up once again. About a minute to go in this race. So over two laps to go. We'll see how this shakes out. Marquardt now opening that gap a little bit up on the guy behind him. So cool to see the Marquardt brothers mixing it up and doing well here in Pro Stock side by side. They're basically privateers. They got a lot of support from local family businesses in their hometown, Alina, where we'll race later this summer. But they're out here racing against guys with factory support and, you know, sponsor paychecks coming in. They're mostly self funded. They're out here mixing it up with some serious big names. Yeah, and they do a great job. They know how to drive these race cars, and they're just getting along, and they know what works and what doesn't. And anytime you move up a class, it's not easy. But they sure are fitting the shoe well. Yeah, Dylan Marquardt, he's actually slowly reeling in the 58 of Trey Eggleston. That would be a battle for third. He was about six tenths faster than Eggleston the previous lap. Definitely closing the gap now. He is almost to the back bumper of Eggleston through the gravel pit. Yeah, Eggleston, that 58, made a little mistake. We'll see if Marquardt can capitalize on it. Two laps to go this time by. Man, Eggleston just trying to play defense, but he's going to open the door just a little bit. Wow, they no were contact. almost made some contact. We'll see here, he knows what he needs to do. He knows that's an option. Right at the end there, he knows he can button up in Calamity Corner. But you have so many other opportunities. You try to put together a couple more options in this last couple laps. Because the track's definitely starting to dry out right there. Yeah, it almost seems like the track is getting away from Eggleston a little bit and actually coming in, coming in a little bit for the setup that Marquardt has. He's found some extra speed over Eggleston here. They come back down the straightaway, less than a car length apart. You see Marquardt now moving over about half a line to see if he has room or an opportunity. Yeah, I think he's going to really have to give it a bonsai move in the gravel pit. He's going to have to get a run out of here. But it, hey, if you're that guy right there, CJ Greaves, you've done what you needed to do all day long once again. He's just Wondered. checked out. I'm just looking at the back of CJ Greaves' car, I thought I might have seen some wisps of steam coming out the back of that car. Didn't look too drastic if that's what it was as he takes the uh, white flag here. See if we can get another look at yeah, that. Yeah, I do. I do see that as well. I'm sure he's well aware of it. He knows exactly what temperature that car is running right now. He's got a considerable lead as there's that battle for third still going on. 
Yeah, he, he knows what's going on. They're telling him. Devin's on the radio letting him know what's going on. And he's just probably backing it off a little bit to make sure he finishes. Because he, that's why you get that lead in the beginning. In case something goes on, you can limp that car and still win it. Yeah, I mean, the, the speed is definitely still there, and he's still about half a straightaway ahead of Jeb Boodle. It's not much coming out. It's just a little bit here and there, just tiny wisps. Not a whole lot, but Let's see if he's able to make it to the finish. Yeah, he's going to tiptoe his way through the gravel pit one final time. Yeah, he's pushing pretty good, so maybe something going on that we do not see here. Is it, yeah, look at that steam coming out. Well, he can just about coast it home from here. One corner to go. He will be staring at the checkered flag here in round number three, and he got the job done. C.J. Greaves, another win here in Pro Stock side-by-side, -side, his second on the year. Some great battles going on further back as well. Jeff Budo coming in second. That's a great run for Budo. That battle for third coming to the line. It's going to be Eggleston holding on over Dylan Marquardt. Excellent run, though, by Dylan Marquardt to uh, bring home a fourth place finish. And Joe Dressel finishes in the top five. Some of the usual suspects not able to get up to the top five. Certainly would have expected a little bit more out of guys like Andrew Carlson and Owen Van Epperen, but they find themselves outside the top five in this one. And again, that just tells you a lot of these drivers have really stepped their game up in pro stock side by side coming into this season. You see our full unofficial results here from Crandon. We're going to step aside for a brief moment. Come back and talk to the top three from Pro Stock. All that and a lot more here at Amsoil Championship Off-Road presented by the U.S. Air Force. Stay with us. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We changed the industry by formulating the first API qualified 100% synthetic motor oil. The rest of the market has been trying to follow our lead ever since. But a head start is a head start. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond. Because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. It's your Uncle Cooper. If you and your truck are constantly tackling the regular duties of the day, go with a tire that can handle them all. Oh man. I stepped in it. Go with the Coopers. Why can't Am to claim bragging rights and trophies? None of us can see the future. But we reach towards it anyway. We might doubt whether we're good enough. Or brave enough. Or question whether we belong. But there's a place between now and the future where you realize you've always belonged. 
what's up here. Join us. Rise above. Welcome back to the Big House Crane International Off-Road Raceway. That is CJ Greaves taking the big win this afternoon in Pro Stock Side-by-Side. -side. We're going to go down trackside to the podium with our top three finishers. In third in the number 58 from Riverside, California in the Polaris, Trey Eggleston. And taken second in the number 41 Yamaha, Jeb Budo. And taking the win from Swamico, Wisconsin in the number 33 Monster Energy Back Ride, CJ Greaves. Haley, another great race, but man, it's hard to catch that young kid, CJ Greaves. It sure is. Well, a lot of action happening throughout the field in this one. Trey Eggleston, pretty much for the entirety of that second half, you were having to play defense and hold your line over Marquardt. So how did you do it exactly? Yeah, didn't get the start we wanted. And uh, yeah, like I think lap three, we ran out of tear off. So I was struggling a little bit trying to get around those guys and then made it all up after the halfway and just uh, kind of cruised around. You know, the, the front guys were pretty gone after that halfway. So I was just going to cruise around, take the third. And uh, but yeah, still super happy with a third, of course. And then uh, I just can't thank everyone who gets me up here. My mom, my dad, Sean, Jonah, Travis, my brother, above all construction, Walker Evans, CBR, Sparkle USA, VP Racing Fuels, Polaris Razor, Cross Motorsports, and everyone, CMI and everyone else. Thank you. Trey Eggleston in third, nicely done. And Jeb Boodle finishing second. You know, your speeds that we're seeing from you this season have been really impressive. I got to know, are you, you feel like you're meeting your expectations or are you surprising yourself with the performances that you've been showing so far in the early rounds? Man, I'm just happy to be up here. You know, this is my, like I said, my first time coming up here and it's always good to run up front with these pro drivers. You know, they've been doing it for a long while and um, coming out here and proving myself is, uh, you can't ask for more. Uh, I just can't thank everyone who helps me get to the track. You know, the families, friends, dad. Uh, thanks to my spotter, Caleb. Uh, and I got to thank all the people that helped me. Method Wheels, Cryptic Side by Side, Fug 21 Fuel Additives, uh, Avenue TV, Ames Oil, T Turner Cycles, Power Sports One, and Yamaha Racing and Blue Crew. I just can't thank everyone enough for helping me with this. It's just a long journey up here, and I'm just excited to be up here at Crandon, you know, the big house. Well, we're excited. Your future looks bright. Jeb Boodle in second. And CJ Greaves making the big rebound back to your winning ways for this round. Uh, you had to work your way forward early on. Was that the biggest challenge for you in this race? Because later on, you weren't so challenged. Yeah, um, the, the track's uh, tricky. I mean, uh, the, the main groove is slick, and uh, the cushion is heavy. And, and it, you, pay, it, you pay if you mess up and end up out there. So it was just about making smart moves when you had the time and the position to do it without uh, potentially hurting yourself or, or losing that spot. So. Um, we were just having fun out there, me and Jeb Boodle, good friends, and the, to battle with him and keep it clean, and we both gave each other a bunch of room, and go at it was a lot of fun. So I'm excited for uh, to keep moving here today and this weekend, and uh, I just really couldn't do it without all my crew, all my sponsors, my family, all the fans that come out here, Monster Energy, Players Factory Racing, um, Fox Shocks, Vision Wheel, Toyo Tires, uh, Chuck Cheek, he really helps me out. The guys from Hayes Brakes helps me out. Um, Luke and all of his crew from Beyond Red Line, my guys, thank you. And uh, we'll keep digging. Hopefully we can get the turbo back up here, but the, heat, the heat's going to be to all them turbo cars, so I think it's going to be a battle of finishing. So uh, we're ready to do it. We'll see you in Pro Turbo. Congratulations, CJ Greaves, winner in Pro Stock Side-by-Side. -side. Thank you very much, Haley. Coming up next, we're going to go truck racing Pro Spec. You're not going to want to miss this race. There's a lot of great new drivers in the field. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Amsoil Championship Off-Road.
sand, heat. Life off-road is tough. We wouldn't have it any other way. If AMSOIL products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to AMSOIL protection today and get fast free shipping from AMSOIL.com. It's your Uncle Cooper. Your SUV is a multi-purpose tool, like a corkscrew fish scaler. And that means your tires should be multi-purpose too. Like these Cooper rugged treks. They're tough, but also run smooth as butter. And with dual sidewalls, it's like having a multi-tool that can look like a completely different multi-tool. Don't take that idea, by the way. I'm gonna patent it. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! products are designed for this kind of punishment think about what they can do for your daily driver upgrade to amsoil protection today and get fast free shipping from amsoil.com the Forest County Potawatomi Brush Run races here at Cranon International Raceway, the big house, the mecca of off-road racing. This is Amsoil Championship Off-Road presented by the U.S. Air Force. I'm Shane. He's Brent. Like you said before the break there, Brent, we're going pro truck racing next with Pro Spec. First, let's take another close look at this track here in Crandon, along with the uh, new features added. This time we're riding along on our GoPro lap here with Kyle Chaney and his Pro Turbo side-by-side. Yeah, you can get a great look at this new part on the track. We call it the Cowboy Cutoff Corner. And you see how narrow it gets going back onto Forest County Potawatomi turn number one. And the speeds are just outrageous through here. You fly down past the crowd. This barn jump got built up quite a bit as well. And we've seen throughout the day a little bit more air time. Cars jumping higher and farther on that one. Certainly as the speeds pick up, we want to keep an eye on that. And then a lot of action around this jump as well, past the skyboxes. You dive down to one of the defining features here at Crandon, the gravel pit. Yeah, it, it really gets really torn up through there. The rocks are bigger. I mean, the, the deep holes and the trenches, and you go out that flares fly away, and that's one heck of a jump, and this is where it gets tricky. Calamity Corner into the finish line, especially with the amount of water they've been putting down. Calamity Corner has been extremely tough for all of our drivers here this afternoon. Got to keep that water down, keep the moisture in the track to uh, limit the dust and limit the amount of blue groove. And they've certainly done a nice job of both of those things. Yeah, they've done a great job. And you can see the clouds are in the sky, but it's just been a beautiful day. Really, really warm from what we're hearing outside. And 
like CJ was saying, that could cause some havoc with some of the pro turbo race cars later on. And that's what happens once in a while. Yeah, absolutely, Brent. But for the fans who are here with us at Cranon International Raceway, don't forget you can stop down by the U.S. Air Force display down on uh, Sponsor Road. Put your skills to the test in the Hot Pit Tire Challenge. We have a an actual Pro Turbo side-by-side -side race car down there. You go down there, it's just one person. You take the tire off the car, set it on the ground, put it back up, record your time, and you could win some prizes courtesy of our presenting sponsor, the U.S. Air Force. That's going on all day today as well as tomorrow. And as always, don't forget about our Amsoil watch party. It doesn't matter if you're watching here at the racetrack, here in Crandon, or if you're watching anywhere around the world on Flow Racing, snap a picture of you and your pals watching Amsoil Championship Off-Road, post it on social media, tag us in the post, and add the hash hashtag Amsoil Watch Party. We may throw your smiling face up on our live stream. Of course, we're all uh, racing and thinking about our friend Kyle Duke, who's dealing with stage four cancer. So you can, uh, if you're here with us, you can go to the merch trailer and buy a Leduc Strong, st or a 99 Strong sticker, excuse me, for $5. All the proceeds from that go into support getting Kyle the best possible cancer treatment that uh, any money can buy. And certainly we cannot wait to see him back here at the racetrack. Yeah, definitely it's different without him here, and we're just hoping everything's going well with him, and it's crazy what people have done for him over the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. A ton of money raised by uh, courtesy of an event that Crandon itself put on yesterday on uh, Friday night. Raised a, a whole bunch of thousands of dollars. It's great to get down there and do a little bit of uh, bench racing with some of our friends, and no doubt plenty of stories about Kyle's history in off-road racing being told by a lot of the people down there last night. Yeah, and where do you begin? He's done so much for the sport, and that's why we're giving back to him because, like we say, he he gives it his all every weekend. He shows up and back at home in the shop, and he's he's a lot of people's heroes, and we just want him to be good. Yeah, and you've been talking to him. Even though he's been stuck at home, he's been working on race trucks. Yeah, he's just been tinkering. He doesn't and stop. Yeah, he's always thinking about doing stuff like that. I mean, that's all he knows. He just, he's a smart driver builder innovator it's cool to see trad here at the track and he's helping out ryan beat and i got a chance to talk with trad and you know we're all bummed out it's not the same and you can see just the air taken out of everybody's chest when you talk to him about it because we care about him that much and we just want him to know that we're here for him and let's keep it going absolutely get well soon kyle Well, coming up next, Brent, this was a fun one in rounds one and two at Anigo Pro Spec. Coming at you next. Had four trucks last year. It was a lot of fun then. We knew it was going to grow a bunch. We have nine trucks on the starting grid here in Pro Spec for round three at Crandon International Raceway. How about it? The hometown boy, Tony Keepers, and that number 52 will start on the pole. He'll be alongside Gray Ledbetter, the defending Pro Spec champion. Nick Visser from just down the road in Summit Lake, Wisconsin, starts third. Then it is Chad Rayford, the round two winner from Anigo, starting in the fourth spot. Dylan Parsons will start fifth. He's the number 99. He'll be alongside Corey Podolsky. Paul Hayward starts seventh. Chris Vandenelsen will start in the eighth spot. He was the world champion in pro spec last year. He's in the number 66. And the number 69 of Justin Tesmer rounds out this nine-truck field. Vandenelsen having all kinds of problems back in Anigo, struggling with some transmission issues, also had some rear end problems, and then yesterday having engine computer problems, ECU problems. So they had to overnight straight from GM an ECU, and actually he wasn't the only driver having that issue, but they overnighted some ECUs. He's out there on the grid. Yeah, there's something that went wrong, so a bunch of different drivers were getting work done late at night As they're on the grid right now, I don't see the 15 of Paul Hayward. Yeah, you're right. I don't see Paul anywhere you can spot in that, that lineup. Truck. Yeah, you can spot the truck pretty easily. It's a hot pink truck. You see the gap there between Podolsky and Vandenelsen. So yeah, they're like, running by. They're giving them the last point and say, hey, man, it's ready to rock and roll. So Paul must have scratched, never made the start. Break. I don't see him back there either by the Steelit starting line. 
can't picture maybe something happened before he went out, but definitely bummer deal. First year in the class. Well, this will be a good look at how these races actually start. That's an 11 time world champion face Destiny up there in the flag tower. And there's the green flag. Wow, a lot of bumping and grinding going on in the middle wow. parts. That looks like Rayford, he's going to be right down the center. Nick Visser, look at this. Van and Nelson on the outside. They're going to be three wide. Still three wide. Wow. They just about ran out of room on the outside, but it looks like Rayford is going to hold the point as they head for turn two. Wow, what clean driving by those three trucks. They couldn't have been any closer. They were leaning on one another three wide in turn one. Wow, I thought Visser and Van and Nelson were hooked together. As Visser just dodges that K rail. It's, wow, what a bounce back for Chris Van and Nelson. Yeah, let's hope he can keep it together. He knows how to win here at Crandon. Won on the biggest stage last year at the World Championships. It's a little bit further back. Tony Keepers has spun out in the gravel pit. Yeah, bummer deal for Keepers. As here comes Gray Ledbetter to that inside. Going to try to take away that spot from Nick Visser in that Yokohama tires ride. Wow, you can just tell how gentle everyone's being on the throttle right now. They're going to make very light contact as they go under the finish line. Oh, oh, Visser lands right on the back of Van and Elzen. Yeah, Visser had a crazy run out of Calamity Corner. Now Van and Elzen trying to play defense on two trucks. Here comes Ledbetter. Wow, that is tight quarters racing down there through the chicane. Now Van and Elzen back to the inside. Ah, Van trying and to stay Elzen to the almost bottom. goes around. He got some help. More contact between those three. Everybody back underway, but Ledbetter is going to move up a spot. Oh, man, look at Visser and Van and Elzen. They're just bumping and grinding. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was a little. I think the gloves are off now. Yeah, no doubt about it. Everything getting a little bit physical <laughs> here in Pro Spec. Early on, too, Shane. Well, Rayford's loving that, running out front all by himself in that Kenda Tires truck. I he's, asked him this weekend coming in, I'm like, are you going to win this weekend? He's like, well, I'm going to try. You know, he's just so calm and cool. So you got Rayford out front. Ledbetter in second, Visser in third, Vandenelsen already shedding some fiberglass, as is Ledbetter. I feel like this fight is a long way from over. Look at Ledbetter trying to get the run on Visser, and she's going to try to take that line away. Yeah, she's trying to muscle her way through on that bottom side. Visser pushes, and so does Gray. And that's what we were talking about, getting in that loamy dirt. It just dogs your horsepower. It is juicy when you get off the race line. Very thick and heavy right down there in Calamity Corner. Everybody just trying to find any kind of grip they can find in some of these corners. Yeah, and you're right. They're just trying to stay up on that cushion. Yeah, staying way outside on entry to Argon Corner there, so. Whatever dry track they can find that's anywhere near the preferred line, that's where they are. You gotta give these drivers credit. Brand new class a couple of years ago, Ryan beat really behind it 120%. And like we said, they started with three, four trucks, and now the class has swelled up. Uh, we're looking at anywhere as later in the year, 15 trucks. Yeah, definitely more trucks in the works for this one. Van and Elson still trying to uh, catch back up. Visser now nothing but a full straightaway between himself and Chad Rayford. Rayford trying to make it two in a row here in Pro Spec. And he was leading in round one as well, but there's some uh, miscommunication that ended up with Rayford getting a stop and go penalty. Yeah, Rayford is doing good. He's out to prove himself. And we expected that before the season that Rayford was going to be a real tough customer here in Pro Spec. Yeah, I, I figured he would do really, really well. He's been around this sport a long time. He knows how to drive. He's a former four-wheeler racer, so he knows how dirt stays together, comes apart, and he knows how to study. He's been around a lot of the best people in the business. Not only all that, but the original Pro Light format back when it was four cylinders and manual transmissions, he's the only driver still still racing this size of truck. You know, Johnny Greaves and a couple of others raced back then. But that's still racing the compact truck classes. He's the only one that raced the original Pro Lights. Yeah, he's so this is like going home for him. Oh yeah, for sure. He's going back, stick shift in the truck rather than an automatic. So he, it's just right in his comfort zone. As Rayford in that Kenna tire back ride, just trying to knock off some laps. There's a lot of race left. Yeah, it looks like the green flag is going to be staying out. So Rayford just setting sail at this point.
Take a look at the lap times. Rayford was just barely faster than Visser that previous time around, and Rayford did get a little bit quicker again as he just crossed the stripe. Oh, oh Keepers off. Trouble for the hometown guy, Tony Keepers. Giving oh, the uh, thumbs up that everything's all right. Argon Lumber and Supply on board of that machine and just tough break, especially this close to home. Well, he'll bounce back tomorrow for sure. As you see Vanden and still trying to run down Gray Ledbetter. Taking another look at the lap times. Rayford and Visser, the two fastest trucks on the track. Rayford about a half second faster that last time around than uh, Visser. So he is moving right now, Chad Rayford is. Yeah, numbers don't lie on our screen. They're showing Rayford looking really, really fast. As the track dries out, I think it's only gonna get better for him. But once we restack this field, we have about five minutes to go. You see up on the left-hand part of our screen as Vandenhausen just wants to click off laps. He wants to get to that halfway. He probably feels like he's been beaten, banged around a little too much. Oh, well, maybe rightfully so. He's already missing a bedside. He's keeping the pace right now with Ledbetter. Fairly similar lap times between those two drivers as now we've reached the halfway point. Rayford looking very strong, very tough to beat here at the halfway point. The defending champ Ledbetter will cross the line in third behind Visser. Well, I don't know. It looks like she went a little wide. Van and Elson. Wow. That braking zone down there is just like a skating rink. It's unbelievably slippery on entry to that corner. You see all, all the drivers having some issues there at different points throughout this race. Yeah, you really got to rotate those trucks early. Well, right now we're going to go down to the third member of our team once again, Haley Shanley. What do you have for us, Haley? It has been an adversity-laden start to the season for Chris Vandenels, and I tell you, what do we know? We know that he fried two ECUs coming into today. They had that next ECU overnighted. They've been thrashing away to get it back in there, and the team members had described it as, of course, a stressful environment, as you can imagine, because it's one thing to have to get that ECU replaced, but it's another layer is the discovery, trying to diagnose why exactly it happened. He did have a shakedown lap just before today's race, but there is no pace like race pace, so they're really getting a good figure on how this truck is feeling out there and keeping my eye on Chris over these last few laps he was really seeming to throw everything at it behind the wheel just to make up that ground that was a few laps before the caution, competition caution came out so it's going to be interesting to see will he have the speed come this restart and potentially put himself in a position where he doesn't have to push so hard so Chris Vandenelsen uh, looking to get things turned around here in the second half of round three thanks for that info on Chris Vandenelsen Haley and after the way his first couple of laps went too I think Maybe a little bit of extra motivation under the helmet for Van Den Elzen. You know, certainly nothing really fell his way in that first half, and he got roughed up a little bit. Some of it incidental, some of it physical driving, although it was still, you know, clean and definitely in bounds. Well, yeah, they, I, I believe in the first, what, lap and a half, they were all beating and banging, and sometimes you got to chill out and calm down, and a lot of trucks got tore up early. Luckily, they're still out there as Rayford's gonna set the pace to take off. You see those black cones sitting up there. He could take off pretty much right at that roller of the jump. He's gonna go right on the backside of that one. Yeah, pretty much. He doesn't wanna waste any time. He wants to get back up to full speed and try to run away once again. That looks like the top three pretty evenly matched on that restart. Vandenel's not so great on the restart. To lose a little bit of track position. Yeah, Van and Elson now going into the gravel pit one more time. Look at Visser trying to hold on tight to Chad Rayford. He doesn't want to let him go this early in the second half. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there was times when Visser was right on the same pace on the electronic timing as Rayford. Those two drivers definitely haven't figured out through Calamity Corner. You're not seeing that big push like some of the other drivers have. Yeah, some drivers are just setting it up perfect. That's what you need to do. Look at Rayford. He's yeah. just tiptoeing his way through there. You've seen that. Extremely conservative, just trying to make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes. He knows he's got the high, the top end speed, especially when there's drier lines on some parts of the track. He knows he can run away a little bit. That just comes with experience. Like we said, Rayford's got, you know, on that 
that actual chassis, going back to his early pro light days, he's got like thousands of laps in this chassis. Yeah, and they've cut that thing apart multiple different times, and they've made it work every time. And now he's moved into a new class, and like we said, we didn't expect anything different out of Chad Rayford. Well, Visser is still trying to squash that narrative entirely. He's trying to keep the pace. See the interval there. Ledbetter holding her own in third right now. Van and Elson running fourth, just coming into our screen there. So a looks, decent day for Chris. It looks like that the race line that's worn in is like a really wide entry to Calamity Corner. That's what I'm seeing out of Rayford so far and, and Visser as well. Yeah, and then it narrows down so much through there. Look at Rayford, he's checking up a little bit, rotating the truck. He's having a little bit more fun with it, track drying out a little. Yeah, Visser is staying with him though. Rayford's still a little bit quicker on that previous lap. There's definitely, I think there's some parts of the track where Visser is the faster truck. I think just the majority of it is where Rayford is a little bit quicker. Yeah, that all around lap is really kicking butt here this afternoon for Rayford. He showed us early in the year he can win, and now, man, he loves Crandon. He loves to be here. He's been around since he's been a young kid. And I know he'll be happy. He loves just everything about this pro light class. Now the pro spec, he said he's spent forever in it. Well, two laps to go this time for our leader. Visser is still there to keep him honest. It's gotta be so frustrating for Visser. He's having a pretty good race since he was able to work his way up into second place. No major mistakes out of the number 80, but just this whole time he's been staring at the back bumper of Rayford. Yeah, just trying to get to the bumper. It's been a challenge as look at, Rayford does the same thing as he did the lap before. Yeah, and Visser, Visser driving a little bit harder and over-rotated. Just shows you, especially on a track that is, has been tough to negotiate all day. That's how slim the margins are. Visser is just trying to give it, you know, 102% instead of 100% to that corner, and it was too much. Yeah, and there's that fine line, and it, after I got the chance to run a pro light, you gotta find that fine line, and it, it's fast, but it, it's very, very small. You have to make sure you don't tip these things upside down, and Rayford, just that track experience and just being around it really helped him fit very comfortably in this pro spec. Well, Visser, for his part, still charging extremely hard. I'm just kind of keeping one eye on, on him at all times. So we're coming to the white flag here for Chad Rayford, trying to make it two wins in a row in the pro spec class. Yeah, one of the hardest laps. If you're a race car driver, you hear every noise and every spring move on that truck. Making sure those tires are underneath you. You don't want to over rotate. You don't want to drive it too hard. Saw just a brief glimpse of the interval back to Gray Ledbetter. The top two trucks just putting down some blistering laps right now. Ledbetter over a second slower on the uh, stopwatch that previous time around. She's still running very strong in third. That just tells you that Rayford and Visser both just dialed in right now. Yeah, Rayford just ran a 113-227. That's fast here in the Pro Spec division. Wow, he's hitting hard off the barn jump. And I just don't think Visser's close enough even to throw just an absolute Hail Mary. Maybe like three truck lengths. Then you can really try to send it, try that last ditch effort, the bonsai move as we call it. But it's just uh, gonna run out of time. Out. Yeah, exactly. She's running out of time and Rayford, he's gonna get another win here in pro spec. If he can dance his way through this final turn, he's gotta stay to that bottom. An impressive win here for Chad Rayford in round three. Visser kept it interesting right till the very end of that one, but he left to settle for second place. And Ledbetter on the podium once again with a third place finish. She is three for three on podium finishes after two second place finishes in Anigo. Vandenel's in across the line in fourth, so that's a start on his uh, bounce back effort for sure. Trucks stayed together for a whole race. You see Parsons Another one of the rookies in the class rounds out the top five as you look at our unofficial results. 
We'll take a short break and talk with the top three when we get back. Stay with us here. This is Amsoil Championship Off-Road presented by the U.S. Air Force. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We changed the industry by formulating the first API qualified 100% synthetic motor oil. The rest of the market has been trying to follow our lead ever since, but a head start is a head start. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us.